Hi, I'm Libby. I talk about gardening chickens and houseplants. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to install an irrigation system. Woohoo! I'm really excited that I've got this irrigation system. It is a drip irrigation system and I'm really um, excited to use it because it does a really excellent job of watering your plants at the base, which is really critical in order to keep them from spreading diseases. A lot of plant diseases are spread by water that comes down from the top of the plant and you know moves disease basically from one leaf to the next as it drips down across the whole plant. Um, so let me show you the kit that we got that has been really awesome in order to make our irrigation system work. All right, so we got this kit right here, this vegetal, vegetable garden drip kit um, from Lowe's, and it came with everything that you really need. We have a very big garden, so we just had to buy a kept couple extra rolls of drip line, but it comes with all the different types of um, couplers that you need. It comes with the backflow valve, the regulator, and the filter that all go right onto your faucet, as well as different um, plugs and fittings that you're going to need in order to um, attach this to your hose. Um, the only thing we had to buy was a lot more stakes to stake it down, as well as an extra roll of the half inch tubing and an extra roll of the one fourth um, inch drip line tu tubing. Otherwise, this kit has been super awesome and came with everything we needed besides a couple extras of that stuff. I have lots of really good time lapses for you guys. You can watch William install this irrigation system. I also put up an arch trellis. Can you see it right there? Um, that I will show you in this video as well. So I'm gonna roll those time lapses and when they're over, I will show you um, everything that I planted as well as the finished irrigation. Okay. William is rolling up the hose because we are about to start our irrigation project and we're going to go over the the game plan here. So the first thing is that this needs to get a split right here. So this is going to split like with a Y connection that has two valves on it so we can still have our hose here and then the irrigation is going to come down off of here. Yeah, so it'll come down through here, be buried underground, just like a black line. And then this is where it gets a little hairy. Through We're here, it's pretty this. simple. We're gonna have to move some of this stuff out of the way. But I'm thinking, yeah, move the blue band. You can't really move that. It's really heavy. It's full of compost. Yeah, we'll go, go between here. So I'm thinking move that. And this one is not really full of anything, so you can move that too. So, so you move these and then kind of cut diagonally till you're behind the beds. So come this way. Here at the beds, so you'll come from that way down under this. And then you'll have a fitting that allows you to come up to here. And then I want a valve here to turn on and off the drip for the bed. And then there'll be a little converter to drip line and then we'll run drip in the beds. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so then like the black line will continue underground, go to the next one, rinse and repeat six times. So each of these will have drip in them. And then um, I'm really excited. Look, my carrots started coming up. Like here's a carrot, there's one, there's one, and there's one. Like I've had such bad luck with carrots, so it's just nice they finally came up. That's what I was like. Okay, and then so here, the last one, We'll have a valve for this strip and then it will have a valve like i guess like here maybe that turns on and off the rest of the rows and so basically black line will come into this first row like right here and then we'll row run a row of drip down go over a row of drip go over a row of drip does that make sense mm -hmm. are you excited i'm very excited let me get the tripod and set you up on time lapse. Are you gonna start now? Yeah, here in a minute. All right, so first thing you wanna do is mow down. We're going to be digging. That's gonna make it a lot simpler. Our septic tank actually runs right here. So William was just checking that he wasn't gonna hit the pipe and then continued to dig the trench. This part is definitely the most labor intensive. It's fairly simple to do. Um, we only dug our trench about four to five inches deep we're here in South Carolina and we don't get very deep freezes or anything and so it shouldn't really be too much of a problem um, for the line freezing but if you do live somewhere where it is colder you're going to want to bury that um, 
as deep as possible so that you don't know, rise and freeze, which can cause problems, obviously, um, with it bursting, etc. And he's just going along the path that we talked about here and digging that trench, cutting through, um, cutting through the fence and through the compost bin here, and gonna weave back behind all of the raised garden beds. As you can see here, um, this took William about 45 minutes. He did a really nice job of digging this trench. I know that was a lot of hard work, so give him a lot of love and shout outs down in the comments. Um, he did a really nice job and he always does a good job <laughs> keeping up with all my random projects that I ask him to do, like this one. So after you get your trench finished, we're going to attach to the hose spigot. And what you just saw William put together there was the pressure regulator as well as a filter for the water. This keeps things consistent throughout your irrigation system. Um, you don't want too high of pressure or anything getting stuck in the system. So those two pieces are important to have and they come in the kit. Then after that, you connect your half inch tubing, um, the black tubing with no holes in it. And, and that runs underground. It's gonna run all the way over to the next bed. We bought an extra roll of the black tubing because we had a big project to do here. Um, that came really handy and William just checked that it wasn't leaking or anything um, and it wasn't, so that was good. And then behind the beds, he's gonna start working on getting the drip line attached now. So you use the puncher tool, which is that blue thing um, there that he's holding to punch a hole into the half inch tubing and run quarter inch tubing up to each of the beds. And that black tubing doesn't actually have any holes in it. At the end of that quarter inch black tube is where the valve is to turn the drip line on and off. In case I don't have anything planted in one of the beds, I could turn that bed off and still have the irrigation system run to the other beds, um, which will be really convenient. I might have often <laughs> and rotating things and pulling things out and so it'll be nice to have a lot of control about what's getting watered and what's not getting watered. Um, then he's repeated this for each of the beds running that quarter inch up to the top and putting the valve on the end and now we're going to attach the drip line. So this brown line has the holes in it and that's the one that's actually going to do the watering. It's the drip line. You attach one end of the drip line to the valve so that it can be controlled and then on the other end you put a plug. Um, we put a little tiny zip tie around our fittings just to make sure that they stay tight, but I do think they'll stay pretty good on their own if you don't have that. And we're just repeating that all the way down. Um, here's the next day. We actually harvested some beets and I'm going to clean these beds up a little bit. Going to do lots of weeding, um, more and more harvesting, and we're going to be adding the arch trellis from a cattle panel that we didn't end up using. So it's really simple. You just hammer down two T-posts and then you take your panel bend it um, up and over, so to speak, and then hammer in two T-posts on the other side. Um, it was actually really simple to do and I'm really excited. It's a really sturdy arch trellis that I think is gonna last a long time. I planted squashes and cucumbers at the base of this trellis and I might plant some beans on the other side to grow up this trellis and make for a really pretty um, show and also really functional to keep the vegetables off of the ground, which will keep them, keep them nice longer. Um, I planted also some herbs here. I also am going to plant all my peppers and eggplant in this planting session here, trying to get everything outside. Um, we finally are past our last frost date um, and everything is ready to go. And it's kind of crazy. Everything just goes at once and everything's growing like crazy. William's cutting the grass here. We have a lot of really beautiful clover in our yard that I love so much. And so do the bees, which is convenient. Um, but I want you to take a look. We're going to move over in a second to the rows. Check out the potatoes. They've been growing so much. It's crazy how fast um, those are growing. It's really great. I'm so excited to harvest all that food in just under 100 days, which will be really nice. I ended out by planting some squashes at the end of the rows next to my corn for my three sisters garden. First off, coming off of the hose Y here, we have a backflow um, prevention valve, the pressure regulator, and the filter mesh. That all comes straight off of the hose so that when I turn it on, it's got the pressure regulated and no drug is gonna be coming through. Then we have our quarter inch tubing that goes down on the path that we talked about. It's buried all back there behind the bushes. Um, and you can kind of still tell where it was buried because it wasn't too long ago. It comes through 
over here and is buried all along the back. And then as you can see, what's coming up is that quarter inch black line like I talked about. And on each of the beds is a valve like this. And I can turn it that way to turn this bed off and turn it back on just like this. And then there are stakes holding the strip line in place. And it's just woven throughout this bread bed here. Um, definitely need to pull the celery soon. I have some friends come this weekend and hopefully they can help me eat that stuff up. Um, as well as here, you can see the drip line. Um, and that continues down for every bed. The thing coming up is the quarter inch. And then there's a valve to turn each bed on and off, which is super convenient. Down here on the end, what we ended up doing was a little different than what I talked about. But we ended up putting three quarter inch lines, one for each row. So this one goes over to that row. This one's right here, and this one comes down to my row of potatoes, which check out these potatoes compared to when you saw them there. They're doing just totally awesome. Um, tomatoes are also doing really well. They've gotten a lot bigger, um, as well as basically everything. Everything's doing really well. But um, so each of these have drip line that goes down each of them, and it comes off these quarter inch. We actually have to buy some more valves. We're just gonna replace those fittings um, with valves once we get them. But that is how we did the row garden right here. And now let me show you um, the trellis in all of its glory. So like I mentioned, all it takes is two T-posts on each side to hold this thing down. And we just zip tied it in place. And it is planted, ready to hold lots of vegetables. And I'll start. This bed hasn't really been replanted, re redone recently, although I've got a lot of good lettuce growing here. A random potato, some um, snap peas growing here. I don't see any peas. There's one that's going to be a snap pea, not yet. Um, but these two beds still need to be replanted. I planted my asparagus, which is this right here, is like the little baby asparagus and strawberries into this, um, this container so that I can take them with us when we leave. There are the herbs. The dill is not doing so great. I always have problems growing dill. If you have any tips for dill, let me know. But I've got um, our oregano right here, dill. Basil got a little nipped in the freeze, but it's coming back. And some lavender there. And this bed, um, I did do some replanting. So there's still lots of onions growing in here. There is this fennel, which is super soft and fun to touch. <laughs> um, and then here I have a couple of different squashes um, coming down the line. Actually, I think these are zucchinis right here. So you can see they're already starting to bloom. And once these grow up a little bit more, I'll start trellising them up this trellis and have squashes and zucchinis hanging down um, off this trellis. There is a random tomato right here that I'll probably trellis on this as well, just for fun. And a random potato, you know, how I do. I am letting this beet go to seed. As you can see, it's got like a ton of growth on it. This particular trunk. It's just like gotten massive and I want to see what it looks like when they go to seed. Um, but I don't know if you can tell, like look how big that beet would be. Um, a lot of my onions over here are starting to look like might be ready to harvest. Like check this one out. It's definitely got a big bulb on it. I will be able to pull a couple of these soon. A couple might take a little longer, but that's okay. Here's another one that's got a pretty big bulb going. Over here I planted some more squash, um, different yellow street neck squashes. And over there are my cucumbers and same thing those will trellis up and over and this bed i've planted a bunch of different peppers so right here i have pretty and sweet peppers i think that's like these couple peppers here then i have some sweet cayenne peppers i don't really plant super hot peppers because that's just not what i like to eat and number one gardening tip is plant what you like to eat i've also got these fool you jalapenos which are jalapenos that are sweet. So I'm super excited to eat those. One right there, one right here that's already got a little flower on it. Um, lots of lettuce that I can start to harvest. Lots of Swiss chard right here that's doing well. Listening to kale, um, lots of parsley right here. And then a couple other peppers that I started from seed. The Johnny Seed Cornito Giant. Um, the Lilo Purple right here, which you can already kind of tell it's got a little bit of purple in its leaves. Um, and some red peppers over there. Here, check out my carrots. This is like the first time I've been able to grow carrots. I'm so excited that they're doing well. My eggplants here and here. Those aren't doing as great. I've never grown eggplant before, so it's kind of an experiment. Random squash, because I ran out of places to put them. 
Um, some more, um, these are tomatillos actually. These are gonna be green tomatillos. Uh, Rhino potato. Um, here is some pepper. This is Road of Hungry from Johnny Seeds. A random tomato, more tomatillos. That's another tomatillo right there. Nala, what you doing? Um, then these are Brussels sprouts and they're doing okay, but I'm not seeing any Brussels formation yet. A couple more peppers right here. I've got some banana peppers right here that are starting to flower, which is awesome. And down the row, I'm not gonna do everything um, here. Obviously that whole row is potatoes. And like, they are getting so massive. I mean, I don't know if you can tell, but they're just huge, This is awesome. Lots of tomatoes here. I've got the Super Sweet 100s. These are the Atomic Grape, Purple Atomic Grape um, from Johnny Seeds. Here I've got some pineapple tomatoes, this one and that one. I've got a couple grape tomatoes right here. Um, some Romas, there and there. This is a weed. Bye. A um, couple of these, it's been really windy today, so a couple of them gotten really blown over. There we go. Um, this is a, this is one, this one's new. Parks Whopper Improved CR. I think it's supposed to be like really massive, so that would be cool. A lot of these got um, a little frostbite, but they're all coming back, which is awesome. Um, the Better Boy tomato right here. Um, two Goliath tomatoes. See, it's super windy. But they're all holding up okay. They're almost to the point where I can attach them to the trellis so soon. Um, Cherokee purple tomatoes right here. This one's really bent. Hopefully it gets there. I might have to stake it until I can reach the um, trellis. Two big beefs. And right here are our black picnic um, potatoes. Yeah, a lot of weeds. Um, <laughs> if you see a weed, pull a weed. That's my second like best piece of garden advice. Um, and I ran out of trellis, so those two are in little cages. And right here is where I am planting my three sisters garden. And so you can see I've got these corns here. I've got some pumpkins and squashes planted beneath them. And basically the pumpkins and squashes will cover the ground prevent weeds with the corn grub and I also plant beans in like a week and the beans will grow up the corn and then use the corn as their troughs. It's really convenient. Right here, lots of okra. Some of it's starting to get its third leaves. I transplanted a couple that were growing in groups, but lots of okra right here. More onions all here, all sprouting, doing great. A couple kales, a little cilantro right here. It's getting there's a cilantro. This is a um, Asian green here. A couple cabbages, which I don't think those are going to make it in time. But that's okay. Um, some arugula right here. More cabbages. Some collards that are actually doing really well. It's been really chilly, so it's been good. A couple more beets. Um, as well as some golden beets, which is be really good. So I've been loving the irrigation system. We only need to put in a couple more valves and I want to get a timer that will detect rain. It's been, the rain's actually been really nice. It's been like every couple of days, we get a couple of inches, which is like ideal in terms of watering your plants. But I do want to get the timer for when we're going to be out of town and stuff. And then that way I don't have to worry about the garden getting watered, which is really nice. And that was everything that I planted. Officially, we are in like the summer season for, you know, I guess, I don't know if we're in the official summer season according to the weather calendar or whatever but according to the garden we are in the summer season everything is planted out even though it has been a little chilly Let's see what it is right now 50 degrees hopefully it doesn't get too cold tonight i am super excited there's so much food in the garden right now like just that whole row of potatoes i mean that's hundreds of pounds of food that that i'm going to yield from a really honestly a pretty small space so it's really really exciting um i hope you enjoyed this video about putting in the irrigation and the trellis that's vertical gardening space is a great way to expand your garden if you only have a small area. Um, we love using um, vertical space and cattle panels are a really cheap way to do it. That, that panel is like $25. The posts are like eight bucks maybe. And so that's a great way to do it. That's also really sturdy. Thank you guys so much for hanging out this week. I'll see you guys back here next week for another video on gardening, chickens, and maybe some houseplants. Bye.